Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ping Fan Wang. Actually, I'm a, it's, it's my first year uh, student. Uh, actually, I just started uh, in last month. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, talk about is a uh, hybrid de decision making system uh, using both image analysis by deep learning and uh, IoT sensor data to detect the human force. Uh, let's move on to the background uh, objective. Uh, the background is uh, the home force is very normal in the uh, over the world, especially it's to uh, it's dangerous to the elderly people. Uh, so it need to it needed to be uh, detected and alarming uh, accurately and uh, quickly. So uh, for this uh, project, so the aim is to uh, detect uh, the home force uh, get um, uh, accurate and. Um, Quickly result uh, because it's a uh, it's my MSc final year project, so uh, there is a budget. It cannot uh, exceed 200 euro, so the limitation is uh, the budget and the time is also uh, limited. Uh, when I okay, accept uh, this subject, uh, I do a lot of the literature review and uh, uh, this. Uh, three kind of methods come into my mind. Uh, the first one is uh, 3D accessorator sensors. Uh, it's, uh, uh, we both know it's accurate and uh, has been proven it's effective to defect the human force, but the disadvantage is obviously. Uh, the first one is it's expensive, and uh, the next one is not uh, user-friendly, and uh, if, the, if you put that kind of device, on people, on elderly people or disabled people, you um, make him uh, them uncomfortable. So I think it's not practical in the real world application. Uh, then the second uh, method is using the deep lens, which is a kind of camera with the uh, future of machine learning or deep learning. Uh, there are also uh, some existing application. It can uh, monitor or tracking people's movement but as it for me is also over the budget. I search it on the Amazon. Uh, usually, it will cost uh, uh, more than uh, around 300 pounds. Uh, and uh, if I want to uh, deploy it uh, in the uh, many rooms, it will cost a lot of money. So it's not my choice. Uh, the last one, uh, it's my final decision. I, 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 I searched in the literature. It can be used for the uh, detect the human force. Uh, the the first advantage is it's cheap. Uh, it can use in the normal camera. In my project, I just use my smartphone to uh, capture video and image. And second one, it, it, the accuracy is acceptable because it's just a MSC project, uh, and. The accuracy will get uh, improved when the deep learning technology is uh, both get cross bounding uh, improved, and the last one is, is user friendly. It, it do not uh, make a lot of the, uh, device on people's uh, bodies, and it also have disadvantage. The first one is is the noise. I think it's unavoidable, and uh, the the second one is deep learning. Deep learning uh, in current stage is not. Uh, ex it cannot explain, so it, it needed to be put, put forward uh, in, in the future. Uh, here's the objective of my uh, project. So the first step is to uh, build the deep learning, a uh, deep uh, neural network. It's based on the recession network. Uh, it's a uh, famous uh, deep uh, neural network, and the platform is a test flow. And, uh, the second step, uh, step is to um, build a benchmark uh, which consists of uh, all kinds of the human action. Uh, the third one is to uh, using the ADE20K dataset. It's used for a training dataset uh, to train the, uh, the neural network we get uh, in the first uh, step, which aim to uh, separate the human uh, part and the background. The first step is to uh, extract the home part from the uh, input image. The last step is to uh, calculate the similarity between the sample image and the uh, benchmark. We can go details in the next slide. 
uh, the first uh, image actually is me, and uh, it's captured in the library of the University of Limerick, and uh, it's an original input. Uh, then I put it into the trained network, uh, which I get the semantic signification. We can see uh, the different uh, uh, section into in this image is marked as different color, and the, the human part is uh, marked as bronze. So uh, I. In, uh, so in the third picture, uh, I just uh, extract the home part uh, from the uh, indoor environment, environment and get the uh, result is called human body extraction. Uh, then this, uh, this is part of my benchmark. It consists of uh, uh, different uh, uh, action of the human body. Uh, actually, it's around uh, 77 uh, images. I, I use the extraction uh, human part to uh, calculate uh, the similarity between the human extraction part with the benchmark. I get the highest uh, uh, similarity, which is the uh, final result. Uh, the result should be a kind of action of stand, folding, kneeling, or et cetera. Uh, uh, well, uh, the, uh, this is uh, this is a result from the image analysis. We can see the first and the second line of uh, the sec uh, first and second row. Uh, the correct rate is eighty uh, percent, and seventy seventy percent, uh, which is quite good. Uh, but we can ignore uh, the third row. I call it. I, I'm sure uh, the co current rate is fifty five percent, which is uh, it's, it, it could be a random result, which is acceptable. Uh, that's, that's why this paper come on. So I will talk it in the next slide. We, we, uh, I uh, made analysis uh, from the first and second line. We can uh, well, I calculate the three kind of uh, right to the accuracy, the precision, and the recall uh, right is quite good. But for the uh, third third row, I call it uh, I'm. I'm unsure. We can we can see in uh, these two pictures. Uh, the first uh, image we can uh, certainly confirm it's uh, this lady is standing. Um, but for the uh, second image, we are not sure. Uh, we can even not tell what kind of uh, action has been. Like we can we can say she is uh, kneeling uh, to pick up something, and we can also say uh, she is uh, falling. Uh, so I call it a confused uh, result. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's also can uh, shown on the correct right. Uh, it's 50, 50, 55 percent, which which is a random result. So to solve this problem, uh, because uh, the uh, th this result is uncertainty, uh, the accurate is not that good. So. The results from uh, the third group it cannot use them as a real uh, real application. Like uh, for uh, uh, if if you made a wrong alarming for a risk, uh, it will cause uh, some um, some bad thing to happen. Uh, so uh, we need uh, evidence to confirm its uh, result. So um, and, and uh, finally the confirmed results can be used for. Uh, decision making or anything else. Uh, actually, this idea is uh, captured from uh, from the summer workshop in University of Limerick. Uh, there is a IoT group. Uh, they doing uh, measure the level of the ag anxiety of the people. Uh, I, we we also uh, get the uh, idea from the this uh, IoT workshop when people is falling. Uh, normally the uh, physiological uh, feature will change, like uh, the pulse will rise, uh, the people will get more sweating, and uh, the body temperature will change. We based on uh, the based on this knowledge, we build a LT platform, uh, which uh, consists of three kind different kind of uh, sensor: uh, the uh, heartbeat uh, sensor, the temperature and the humidity sensor, and the environment sensor. We combined it, it is a uh, the three one, 
uh, into a uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, make it a uh, uh, bracelet to put a uh, uh, volunteer's uh, arms, and uh, we collect the data and uh, translate it to the code one application. Then I just I just do the analysis in this stage. Uh, we based on the knowledge from the doctor or some experts, we uh, deter determine uh, if it's if the people is for not uh, the result is uh, we using this result from the IoT to support uh, both uh, confirmed result and the uh, confusion result uh, with the uh, result from the IoT. Uh, sensor, we can uh, we can we can finally get the final result, which is um, which we suppose uh, get improved. Uh, we can in the uh, large in the latest stage, we can confirm the people is full or not. So uh, there's the conclusion. In the end, I uh, the hybrid. The, a hybrid uh, decision making system can improve the accuracy of the fault detection, but uh, there is also some drawbacks. Uh, the first one is this system can only detect uh, uh, one human or one objective. And the second one is uh, uh, for the uh, good performance of this system, uh, the, they need a strong color construct, uh, if, if, uh, which, which is mean if I write a uh, uh, we, if I wear a white uh, clothes and uh, the background is also white, uh, the system cannot uh, detect the human from the background. The third one is uh, the sensor is sensitive to the environment. Uh, it could be not and accurate when the uh, environment is changed a lot. Uh, in last, uh, we we uh, I think the time series data an analysis would be a uh, beneficial to the future research because uh, the folding is a continuum uh, movement. Maybe we can uh, get get a pattern or model can um, predict the fall before the accident happening. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Dr. Sean McGrath, which is my uh, MSc project uh, supervisor. She's uh, he's in the Limerick, University of Limerick and uh, Dr. Nanjing and the prof, Professor James Martin, which uh, is currently my super, Peter supervisor, and Mr. Duncan Davis. Uh, he, uh, he's in the industry, which is our industry partner. And uh, thank you everybody. <laughs>